Hello and welcome to my tutorial series on how to model game assets in Blender. This is part 7 and today we're going to model a teapot. This is the finished model and as always I designed this so we can follow along very easily. Let's get some reference down by pressing Shift A, go to image, then background. And I will provide the image as a download in the description below. Now press Shift A, go to mesh and cylinder to add a cylinder to your scene. And scale it in the Z axis by pressing S, then Z. You can enable the X ray mode by pressing Alt and Z. Now press tab to get into edit mode and by pressing command and R you can set some loop cuts in and by scrolling the scroll wheel of your mouse you can set the number of cuts. Now shift select these edge loops here and scaling in the X and Y by pressing S for scale then shift Z. Shift select these faces here and press E to extrude them outwards. With X-ray mode enabled by pressing Alt and Z, select these vertices here and place them. Now select these top faces and press E to extrude them and then G to move them. Repeat this sometimes to match the shape of the G-Pod. This looks a bit too blocky, so we have to select all the vertices of our new geometry and then we can scale them down in the x-axis by pressing S for scale then X to constrain the scaling in the x-axis. Feel free to work on the shape a bit more but it is not necessary because we will apply a subsurface modifier later. Now shift select these top faces here and press I to insert them. By moving your mouse you can set the scale of your inset. After that press X to delete these faces and choose faces. Now let's work on the top of our teapot a bit more by selecting this face. And now we can use the I key to inset it and the G key to move it around a bit to follow the curvature a bit more. This hill is a bit too wide, so select the whole edge loop by pressing Alt and left click and by pressing S for scale then Shift Z you can scale it down. Now do the same for the bottom part, except here we don't want a hole, but we will create a little rim where it will stand on. Select this face loop by pressing Alt and left click and press E to extrude them down a bit. Now on the right hand side you can add a subdivision surface modifier and set it to 2. Right click on your model and choose Shade Smooth. These stripes here look a bit weird, so in edit mode select this face and delete it by pressing X 
then choose faces. Now select this edge loop by pressing Alt and left click and under face select grid fill. This will solve this problem. Select this edge loop and press E to extrude it up a bit. Now under modifier add a solidify modifier to your object to give it some thickness. If you want to define your shape a bit more, you can always insert some loop cuts. Now select these faces. Then press E to extrude them up. Let's work on the shape a bit more by pressing S for scale, then X to scale in the X axis. And then select these two edges here and pull them up a bit by pressing G, then Z. By selecting all these faces here, we can now inset them by pressing the I key and move our mouse to set the scale of the inset. Now scale it in Z axis a bit by pressing S and Z and then press X to delete these faces. Now we have to select these edge loops and then right click and bridge edge loops. Now we will model the lid of the teapot so add a cylinder to your scene by pressing Shift A, go to Mesh and then Cylinder. After you've done that, scale it down in the Z axis and place it right here. In Edit Mode you can now select the top face and press E to extrude it or S to scale it down. Here I inserted it a few times and moved it up and down to create an interesting shape. Extrude this last part out, enter some loop cuts by pressing Command and R, select the face loop by pressing Alt and left click and scale it up in X and Y by pressing S for scale, then Shift Z. To model a handle, add a plane to your scene by pressing Shift A, go to Mesh, then Plane. And in Edit Mode, by right clicking on it, you can go to Merge Vertices and Collapse to get this single vertex. Now use Move or the G key to place it right here. Now you can extrude this vertex and follow the curvature of the handle. Now back in object mode by pressing the tab key, go to object, then to convert to and curve from mesh or text. In the curve properties under geometry, you can give it some depth. All you have to do now is right click on the object and choose Shade Smooth. If 
from the last detail on the teapot, select your object and press tab to get into edit mode. Then set a loop cut right in the middle by pressing command and R and select this portion of the loop cut. Now you can press Command and B to bevel this edge and move your mouse to set the scale. Now press E to extrude, then S to scale, then Shift Z to scale in X and Y. Let's add a cup to our object by adding a cylinder to your scene. By pressing Shift A, go to Mesh, then Cylinder. Scale it to roughly the size of the cup. Press tab to get into edit mode. Add some loop cuts by pressing command and R. Select the top edge loop. Enable your proportional editing tool by pressing O and press S to scale it up. Now inset the top face by pressing the I key and press E to extrude it down. Now scale this bottom face down to match the shape. You can insert a loop cut by pressing Command and R, and by pressing G, then Z, you can move it up a bit to give it more of a rounded edge. Now for the bottom part, use Inset and Extrude to create this rim here, just as we did with the teapot. This was the modeling part. Now we can head to shading. In the shading tab, select your object and press plus new to create a new material. Choose a base color right here. And I want the handle to be metallic and a bit more reflective. So I have to set the metallic value of my shader to 1. Select the teapot and add an image texture node to your shader. Also add a texture coordinate node and a mapping node. Select UV as your input for your mapping node. Select the object and press Ctrl and A to apply all transformations. Now in edit mode by pressing tab, then press A to select all, then press U to smart UV project. For the image texture node, open this image that I will provide in the description below. Set it to non-color. Add a bump node to your shader. Connect this to the normal input of your shader. And then connect the image texture to the height input of your bump node. On the mapping node, you can now set the scale of the texture displayed on your model. You can set the strength of the side map at your bump node. Now in edit mode and with X-ray mode enabled by pressing Alt and Z, 
box, select the bottom half of your model and deselect these front faces here. In the Material tab on the right side, press plus to add a second material to your object. Press plus new to create a new material and then click assign. This material will use the first material too, but by clicking on the little number right next to the material's name, we will convert it to a single user material. And now here we can set a different scale. Don't forget to Smart UV Project this object. Now you can select the cup and choose the same material. By pressing tab to get into edit mode, you can now select these inner faces here. And add a second material to your object. Give it another base color. And if you want to, you can assign this material to the cup's rim too. And this is it for the teapot. If you have tried this tutorial, I would be glad if you showed me your work by sending it to me via Twitter or Instagram. And if you want to, I will showcase some of your work in future videos. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification button to keep yourself updated on new videos and tutorials. Thanks for watching and have fun creating!